Hi folks, so you like films, you like music, maybe you've already written a little bit of music and you would like to start writing music to picture uh, for films, for media, anything. Um, so here's uh, my list of gear that you need in 2022. This video is mainly directed towards uh, writing orchestral music, but this will also help you if you're setting up any kind of home studio for music production. As you have probably heard people say on YouTube or anywhere else on the net, it's not about the gear. We all know that, um, but actually you do need a bare minimum to kind of get started. Thankfully, the technology that we need um, is more and more accessible. Chip prices have gone down a lot in recent years. And there are lots of free tools as well, um, especially for software. And you can get started with a relatively low budget. In this video, we're going to cover computers, we're going to cover uh, sound cards, we're going to cover keyboards, um, you know, optional gear, we're going to cover sample libraries, which software do you need, and lots of other things. So stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so first thing, you need a computer. Computers are kind of a big deal. Um, it's a bit of a pain, but you're, you know, you want to get into music making and <laughs> you have to know a little bit about the machines because the software and the sample libraries that you're going to be using need a fair amount of power. Um, and as the software has evolved and the sample libraries as well, the, the bare necessities has also gone up. What I recommend is having at least 16 gigs of RAM. Sometimes in places on the internet you'll see 8. 8 is really small by today's standards. Um, I think you need 16, preferably 32. And even better is having about 64 or further or higher up. That's because the sample libraries actually need a, use up a huge amount of RAM. You also want a processor um, that's going to be at least 2.4 gigs uh, gigahertz. Um, you can um, think about like an i7. Uh, I use a Mac, but you, you don't have to use a Mac. You can use a PC. It really doesn't matter. Um, what actually matters is the you know the processing power of your machine. You also want at least 500 gig hard drive because, um, I mean, the software itself is already going to use up a lot of space on your hard drive just to function. Um, I mean, most computers these days come with a, a terabyte. I mean, that's kind of fairly standard, I think. A couple of optional things um, that you might consider which are really worth it is, first of all, an external hard drive. Um, you want to get an SSD external hard drive because a, a normal hard drive like, you know, the old uh, disk hard drives won't be fast enough for running um, sample libraries. I use these guys here by um, SanDisk. These are great. You know, frankly, they I think it's about like a little over 100 euros for one terabyte. And if you can get NVMe, that's even faster, much faster than the normal SSD. So get NVMe if you can. The other optional thing that you might want to consider is an external screen. So I don't know if you're on a desktop or a laptop, but it's kind of useful to have two screens so that you can have one screen maybe for viewing the video that you're going to be scoring to and another one for the sequencer. Or you might have, um, you know, you might have your DAW uh, split up into the track area and then the MIDI editing area. That's also really useful. I also really recommend that you have a backup system. So you, for this, you don't really need a super fast drive. So this can be a normal hard disk drive, um, you know, get like one tera, two tera, maybe four. Um, and, you know, so you have just a, a, a backup system. Ideally, you want to back up in three different places. That's kind of the golden rule. You want to back up, uh, you know, on two different hard disks and somewhere on the cloud. So, you know, maybe if you're using a Mac, maybe you'll have it like on your computer. This is this is for your, your actual work, right? So it, this would be on your computer, backed up to a hard disk and on the cloud somewhere. And again, in the computer department, an optional thing, which is nice to have is a mouse because you're gonna do lots of pointing and clicking and you wanna optimize your workflow so that, you know, your, the ideas come out of your head and go into the computer as quickly as possible. So. A mouse is a great thing to have. Um, I use the um, Logi MX3, um, which is great, recommended by Dan Keen, so shout out to him because this is really, I love this mouse. So it's got, um, you know, different buttons on the side so you can scroll uh, both vertically and horizontally, which is nice, and you've got extra buttons for different functions. So 
great thing to have also. Okay, software, this is a big, big question and it's not really a big question at the same time. There are lots of options and they're all great in their way. You just have to find the one that works for you. Logic comes in at uh, about 200, I'm gonna talk in euros because I'm in Europe. So um, at about 200 euros. Um, Ableton, not so well known for writing to picture, but still works fine. Um, and you've got a free version, only you'll be very limited in tracks with that. Um, Cubase is a big one, Hans Zimmer uses that, so you know, that's like a reference. Another one is Digital Performer. Again, I don't really know much about that one, but I know it's a popular choice with uh, media composers. You can also look at a couple of free options with Cakewalk and Reaper. I would say that the most important thing is to get to know your DAW. You wanna really use it like almost like a musical instrument. You wanna know all the shortcuts. Use, learn keyboard shortcuts. That's a really big one. Learn keyboard shortcuts. They're gonna save you so much time and get your ideas flowing much quicker and that's important right and if you're going to write to picture you're probably going to want some kind of orchestral library writing to picture does not have to be orchestral i mean maybe you're going to write just electronic music maybe you're going to you know record your guitar only and like process the sounds or maybe you're going to use just a piano it, it could be so many things there there are no rules about how to write uh, music to picture it just has to fit the picture but still writing to writing to picture quite kind of traditionally involves writing to orchestra and writing for orchestra is very exciting and very rewarding and we now have amazing sample libraries that will you know not be the real thing for sure and we're not going to try to copy the real thing but they get you can still now infuse sample libraries with a lot of emotion and that's the most important thing so if you're just starting out um, you could get a couple of free options um, Spitfire uh, Discovery, that's like, you know, it's totally free and it's really already a, like a proper sample library that sounds good. You definitely, now this is not exactly just orchestral, this is all kinds of instruments. You definitely want to get Spitfire Labs. Spitfire Labs is a, an amazing free library and it's got so many amazing sounds that even pros use. I use them all the time. They're great. So get Spitfire Labs. There are another couple of free uh, libraries that I don't know so well from orchestral tools and another one called Palette Library. Okay, and if you're gonna buy a library, um, I really recommend um, Spitfire Albion 1, which is kind of a package that gives you everything um, you need to get started. It's got a great um, orchestra, it's got some great synths, um, different textures that you can use. It's, it's just very versatile. And again, lots of pros still use Albion 1. I use it all the time. You might also consider, uh, again, Spit, you can tell I like Spit li Spitfire libraries. Uh, BBC, uh, if you want, want to move up from Discover, then you can get uh, BBC Core, um, which is like a proper full orchestra and uh, very versatile. It comes also, if you do that, get the Spitfire template for Logic or any other uh, sequencer that works with um, with that BBC core because um, or you know any of those BBC libraries because they are it's a really fantastic template. Other libraries that you might consider that I don't know these quite as well um, but you can still check them out are uh, Vienna Symphonic Library, Orchestral Tools, Native Instruments, East West Quantum Leap, Cine Samples, 8DO and Audio Imperia. All right next up you're gonna need a sound card. Um, this is not like optional anymore. <laughs> You can't use the sound card that's inside your computer. It's not going. It's not going to work well enough. Um, and now we have lots of options for sound cards that are, you know, relatively cheap. It's not a huge investment, and you can get these secondhand. So on a starter budget, we've got the Behringer Euphoria UMC22. That's only at 52 euros. We've got the Focus Scarlet 2i2 third gen at 159 euros. Another very popular choice um, is the Universal Audio Apollo. Um, that's at 489, 489 euros, and that's uh, very popular because you can actually save. Um, it comes with plugins, and it actually runs the plugins on the actual sound card, so that saves uh, some resources for your computer. So you're also going to need a MIDI keyboard. This is a keyboard that will allow you to input notes into your DAW, into your sequencer. Um, so this has to be plugged in via USB. Uh, or a MIDI port um, if your sound card allows it. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big 88 weighted keyboard, okay? It can be even a small, small thing as long as it's 
I, I do recommend that it's velocity sensitive so that you can get you know the expression that you want in there. So a couple of popular choices for keyboards are the Akai MP MPK and that comes in at 88 euros. You've also got the Art Arturia line which is also very popular and you could go for maybe like a Keystep Pro uh, and that's at 444 euros. If you actually play the piano and you wanted a weighted keyboard you could go with something like the M Audio Hammer 88 that's at 422 euros but it's going to take more space. I really appreciate having a sustain pedal as well, but that's optional because, you know, as soon as you do any kind of piano line, if you don't have the sustain pedal, that means you're going to have to like write it in to the MIDI automation. That's kind of a pain. All right, headphones. So it's, this is a big question because, um, as media composers, we're not just, it's not just about writing the music. It's also about mixing it. Um, whenever you deliver, some music to a producer, a director, or just for your you know, demo reel, you want it to sound great, out of the box. You really want to get that right. Headphones are a really good solution if you don't have a treated room. Let me explain. If you're using monitors, you want to have treatment in your room because otherwise you're not gonna get a clear reading of what the music actually sounds like. And it's not gonna translate well to whatever you know situ listening situation anyone that's listening to your music right so it's they might they might listen to it in a in a in a car or a different studio or on headphones or on an iphone an ipad a computer um so you want you want to make a mix that sounds good and translates well and frankly headphones are a really good solution to that problem if you don't have a fully functioning studio setup actually um and Catherine Dern uh, talked about this in a video and it was quite an eye-opener for me because I do have you know a studio set up and I do have monitors but they're not like super high-grade monitors um, and so now I mix more and more on headphones and frankly it's been quite liberating so you might get closed back headphones which are useful for uh, you know you, you can mix on them but you can also do tracking on them meaning you can record if you're recording your voice or an instrument they won't the sound won't leak out of them, right? But they're not quite as good for mixing. So it's more kind of an all-around headphone. And a couple of popular choices for closed back headphones are the Beyodynamic DT770 Pro or the Sony MDR7506. Then you have semi-open headphones, which are better for mixing. That's what I use. Um, I have the Bayer Dynamic T DT880 Pro and they are fantastic. I just love them. They just, they sound really good. It, they're not very expensive, but you, I think you can really get a professional sound using them. If you want completely open headphones, you could get the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro. So if you do work in a treated studio, and so you have um, sound isolation on the walls and you've sorted all that out, you could get some monitors. Monitors are not cheap. Um, there's no real way around that. I mean, a starting price would be getting uh, a popular choice is the KRK Rocket RP5. Uh, they're at about 145 each. You could get one of the Yamaha HS series, which is what I'm using here. This is the HS7. They go from five, seven, and eight, depending on the size of the room that you're in. And they're at 289 each. And if you want to go a step up from that, you could maybe get the Neumann KH120A, which are at 664 each. Now, another thing that I think is kind of really useful for writing orchestral music is a MIDI controller, because it's the MIDI controller that will help you send CC information to actually kind of give life to your sample libraries. Um, if you think about it, when you, when you hear um, any kind of stringed instrument or a wind instrument the sound isn't just kind of straight otherwise it's going to sound like a synth you want to have the sound that kind of you know undulates and that's what gives the expression of the orchestra this is an entry-level Korg Nano Control 2 also a very popular choice because it's just so cheap and it does the job so you have these little faders here and these are what you will use to control dynamics on your sound libraries the only problem with this this one is that the, um, the the faders have a very short throw. It's only about three centimeters. So the resistance is okay, but it means that if you move it just a tiny bit, you're gonna get these big changes and when you want some, actually something smooth. So if you wanna move up from there, uh, you could get maybe um, 
I mean, there's, there are so many and there are lots of discussions um, on forums and so on about MIDI controllers and everyone has their favorite. One that's become quite popular, but it's a very kind of small production, uh, is the Nuances controller by Pierre Caillet, who is a, a composer in France. So he makes these himself. They're going for 225 euros. Um, and if you want one of those, you need to sign up for the newsletter and um, basically jump on them as soon as you receive the email because they go within a few hours. The only thing with that, with that controller is it only has two faders on it. So another option if you want more faders is to get the uh, Audio Imperial Fade. I have one of those um, coming in the post so um, when it arrives I'll be able to tell you more about it. So another thing that might be really useful for you to have is a DAW controller so this will actually control the software. Um, you can use it to control volume faders, you can use it to control uh, playback you know so you know kind of play, stop, record kind of basic stuff but it's nice to have that on a separate controller and again this nano control will do that I mean it can do both. Other choices that I've heard about are the PreSonus fader port only that has one single fader but that's okay you can you know you can switch between the different tracks very quickly and if you want something bigger you've got the Behringer X touch that's also very popular right and the last thing I wanted to mention uh, in this kind of studio setup to get composing is to have a mic it sounds silly but um, having a mic is is a great thing because you know all of this stuff that I've talked about so far is all computer based but maybe you play an instrument, maybe you sing, um, and that just gives such another dimension. You don't realize how lucky you are to actually be able to make music, you know, using your body, using your, you know, using your instrument. So do that and put that into your music. So get a mic, um, all so that you know you can add that onto you know your sample libraries. You can just be more creative. A couple of mics that I might suggest to get started would be the Rode NT1. That's a very popular choice. Uh, the Shure SM7B is like in almost every studio in the world. I have AKG P170s. They're these little things. They only cost 89 euros each. Um, but if you want to like to have a little stereo pair that you can put somewhere, I've had some really, really nice recordings made with that. And of course there's the SM57, which is also very, very popular. You'll find that in almost every studio in the world. And you can use that on, you know, loud stuff like drums. You can lose it, you know, if you're like banging into something or whatever. Just get, you know, just go wild, do whatever you want, and then just process the sound afterwards. You can do amazing things just with household equipment, you know. And that's about it. So um, again, the most important thing is not the gear, it's you know learning to use it. And that takes time. You have to be patient. You have to work at it every day. So if you are interested in making music um, to picture, then I really strongly suggest that you make music every day. Try to compose, even if it's 30 seconds, even if it's just throwing something into your sequencer, you know, 10 minutes before going to work, that's fine. Just to, you know, use the time that you have, but try to do it every day because that's how you're going to get better. And invest in your learning as well. I've been on like a gazillion courses to learn how to use the technology and learn how to train my ears, study orchestration, read books, and just listen to lots of film music because we all love it. It's great and get inspired and have a lot of fun. That's really the most important thing, have fun making your music. Hope you like this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you next time.